I thought it might be worth trying to record a screencast of what I've been doing uh, for quite a bit of today. Um, we have a problem in that we've been given some boundary data uh, for one of the states of Germany, Sachsen Anhalt, in a slightly difficult format. Uh, basically, we've been given these uh, line strings. Um, now, these are uh, only for the interior boundaries of the regions of the state we're interested in, um, and unfortunately, they have quite a lot of gaps in them. So, in order to kind of, what we basically want to do is create polygons out of these, uh, which sometimes we'll be able to do using the polygonize plugin. Um, so, if I run this uh, polygonize here, then unfortunately, it only finds two or three different polygons out of all that data. They're the internal ones. Um, this you can kind of do slightly better by tracing around the outside, creating the outside boundaries here, like I did that for this one here. But it turns out there are still lots of gaps within the lines that we're tracing. Um, so we need to take a slightly different approach. Uh, so I'll get rid of that layer there. Um, so the first thing I want uh, is a boundary of the rest of the state. Um, and I've got that from uh, Global Map It, so that's basically open street map data. Um, and this is the boundary of uh, Sachsen Anhalt, uh, the one around the outside. Um, and what we're going to do basically, we've created, a, I created a new layer, uh, which is a shapefile based um, layer for polygons. Um, and that's this one. I've done a couple of these regions already. Uh, this is in um, editing mode, which is why it has the fuzzy red uh, outlines there. Um, but suppose I want to do this um, extra boundary down here, um, then the way I'm going to do that is basically by tracing by hand, um, which must sound like it's a massive amount of work, but uh, QGIS has some features that makes it actually very quick. Um, so what I'm going to do for us zoom in on that region so it's filling the whole screen, or uh, a good part of it. Um, incidentally, a nice tip for moving around this data is the mouse wheel will zoom in and out and the middle mouse button, you can hold that down to pan, so that saves you having to swap about to the pan tool and back. Um, so in order to do what we're going to try and do, we're going to trace, but with this option here on, oops, it's disabled because I have to toggle into editing mode again. Uh, where's it gone? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so this option here, which is called enable tracing, um, that basically means that when you're creating a new polygon, it will follow its way around existing lines or anything I think that it can snap to. Um, in this case, we want to be able to snap to either these lines here, uh, the uh, internal boundaries we can give, um, or the external boundaries of the state which we got from OpenStreetMap. Um, so to make sure that happens in the settings menu, there's a snapping options uh, dialog, and here just make sure it's on all visible layers. Um, also, snapping to vertex, not to segments, um, and uh, the tolerance here. Uh, yeah, I've set it to be within pixels rather than map units. I'm not totally sure what they are, but within about 20 pixels is kind of easy enough that you can tell when it's snapping and uh, fi fix them correctly. So, um, uh, I'm going to select this feature, the add feature. Now, because the active layer is um, a polygon layer, uh, this will start adding polygons rather than anything else. And you might notice as you move the cursor nearer to the boundary, you get kind of, uh, it snaps to that, and you see a little pink thick cross that indicates it's snapped. So I've just clicked left click there. So that's created the first point here. And as you can see, if I move it, snap it to a vertex further along the boundary, then it actually is tracing along the existing line underneath there. So if I'm going to click oh, here again, um, that might look as kind of going wrong because it's got this bit in the middle, um, which is kind of inside and out. But really, what it's caring about is going in order around the edge of the points that you've selected. Um, so uh, perhaps I'm just going that. But if I carry on clicking, you'll see that this actually gets righted once I go around the corner. Um, so um, first, I have to fix this little bit, which is a bit complicated. Now, so what's happened here um, is that <coughs> just if I zoom in we got to a point where there is no join between this boundary and this one. Um, so I'm going to click there, the last point on the state boundary, and then click into the interior boundary, the one that uh, which might have lots of problems in it. Okay, so now we're onto this one, it can again trace along the edge um, of that line. So, and you'll notice if I click here, say, the big gap on the left, which might look like it's going wrong, actually is fine, because we're still describing the interior of the polygon correctly. 
So you can kind of uh, let me zoom out a bit so I can see how far along I can go in one go on this boundary, uh, like up to there. No, there's clearly a break in the line there because that's not tracing the line path properly. But once I go to here, it's fine. So I'll click there. And yeah, it looks like just here there's a gap in the boundaries. This is one of the reasons why this underlying data has been a bit of a nightmare to work with, is there are these random holes in it. So here I just click on the last point in one boundary and the first point in the next one. Um, and that works out okay. So here I can go quite a long way now along this boundary to find the next point. I might just do this corner bit by hand again, just to make sure I can see what's going on there. Um, yeah, so as you see, zoom, you do have to wait a bit for it to kind of catch up. But I think I'll do the last point on the interior boundary there, the first one on the um, state boundary there. Oops. And hopefully there, I'm very close back to the beginning. So once you're back at the beginning, just uh, right-click the mouse, um, and then it brings up, I'm not sure you'll be able to see this window, uh, but it brings up a window to enter an ID, which I'm just going to leave blank for the moment. Um, I click OK, then uh, you should see that we've created quite a nice boundary there based on the other boundaries we have there. Um, so uh, I've been trying a lot of different approaches for this, um, and this so far is the only one that makes it feel like you can actually make progress at a steady rate. Um, so I think I'm going to carry on and do the rest of these boundaries um, and hopefully I'll be done with this task. But this is the most difficult boundary data problem I've had so far in dealing with the states of Germany. Um, normally you don't have to do anything like this, like the polygonized uh, thing will work if you just have line strings and not uh, polygons. Um, or, you know, if you have polygons in the first place, that's ideal and you just sort of worry about coordinate systems and then having the right IDs and things. So I'm going to stop the video there and I hope it's been some use.